live. We're so glad you're joining us this morning. My name is Monica. Good morning. I'm Kate. And we are here to pray with you. Our buddy Fred isn't here because his um, grandson, AJ, is having an eye procedure today. So let's begin in prayer. We're going to lift them all, and we're going to pray for everyone and um, for this next moment of prayer that we're going to do together, this process of Lectio Divina. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, amen. amen. Heavenly Father, we come to you. We come with grateful hearts. We come with pleading hearts that we may feel your presence in this time. We ask you to be with all those who are ill and suffering and afraid and worried right now. There's so much in the world still. But we trust in you, and we know that you love us, and we just pray that we can see you looking at us and loving us. Help us to just feel that for this next little bit of time. We ask for uh, release of the distractions that might keep us from you. We offer special prayers for Fred and for his grandson, AJ, and for his granddaughter, Marion, who is also having a, a surgical procedure. Um, just bring some healing to them and bless Fred as he tries to um, be the papa to all of them and give him the grace to and the health to keep up with it. We also pray for Aaron Earls and Amber's husband who's in surgery right now. We pray for his complete healing. And we pray for Kevin Smith and for his family. And then all those other ones that we don't know about, that we haven't mentioned out loud, who need your prayer, need our prayers, need your blessings. We trust you with all of this, Lord, and we thank you and we praise you. In the name of your son, Jesus. Amen. Amen. Beautiful. All right. Come, Holy Spirit. We need some Holy Spirit now, right? Right. So we are going to begin the four-step process of Lectio Divina. First, Kate will read the whole of the gospel from this past Sunday, and then I'll read my uh, modern-day parable story, and then we'll begin the prayer process. So, Kate, would you please read that gospel okay. now? Uh, this is from the Gospel of Mark, chapter 10, verses 17 through 27. As Jesus was setting out on a journey, a man ran up, knelt down before him, and asked him, Good teacher, what must I do to inherit eternal life? Jesus answered him, Why do you call me good? No one is good but God alone. You know the commandments. You shall not kill. You shall not commit adultery. You shall not steal. You shall not bear false witness. You shall not defraud. Honor your mother and father. He replied and said to him, Teacher, all of these things I have observed from my youth. Jesus, looking at him, loved him and said to him, You are lacking in one thing. Go, sell what you have, and give to the poor, and you will have treasure in heaven. Then come and follow me. At that statement his face fell, and he went away sad, for he had many possessions. Jesus looked around and said to his disciples, How hard it is for those who have wealth to enter the kingdom of God. The disciples were amazed at his words. So Jesus again said to them in reply, Children, how hard is it to enter the kingdom of God? It is easier for a camel to pass through the eye of a needle than for one who is rich to enter the kingdom of God. They were exceedingly astonished and said among themselves, Then who can be saved? Jesus looked at them and said, For human beings it is impossible, but not for God. All things are possible with God. Amen. Amen. Isn't that just one of the best? If we could just have that in front of us all the time. That's true. You know, all things are possible for God. Um, beautiful. Thank you for sharing that reading it so prayerfully it's really good so i was given a, a little bit of a unique story and i hope that um we can all kind of be in that moment and i hope that it helps and blesses you in some way the title is called truth commandments colleen knelt beside her bed and prayed lord what must i do to spend eternity in heaven with you she closed her eyes and took a slow deep breath she held it, wanting to feel the life in her lungs, almost afraid to exhale for fear this might be her final moment on earth. As she exhaled, she listened to the air pushing its way into the room. 
Her hands felt the stitching of her grandmother's quilt, which lay neatly folded across the bed. Colleen desperately wanted to hear her grandmother's voice again. Now is the time I most need her wisdom, she thought. Another deep breath in and slow exhale out. One after another, waiting, waiting, waiting for an answer. She stayed in the same position for nearly an hour, trying to stay focused on hearing God speak. Please, Lord, she pleaded. I'm a good person. Let me hear your voice. She decided to try another position and moved to the corner chair by the window. Colleen sat very still, feet flat on the floor, working hard to keep her mind clear so she could hear an answer. She was afraid to move. She needed to hear an answer. Her life seemed to be off course lately. Something was nagging her, tugging at her heart. I am a good person, she reassured herself, taking a personal inventory to prove it. I, I pray a daily rosary. I say the blessing before meals. I go to Mass every Sunday and put money in the collection each week. I obey the Ten Commandments. And she recited a checklist out loud. I do not kill. I do not cheat. I do not steal or lie. I respect my mom and dad. I have obeyed all the commandments since I was a young girl. Colleen heaved a sigh the size of a canyon and opened her eyes. She was surprised how dark the room had gotten. She turned on the table lamp next to her chair and stood before the window. The field behind her home was still and silent. Do the trees and grass and animals hear God's voice? She wondered out loud. I don't think I ever will. Then she sunk back into her chair, hugged a pillow, and sobbed. The next morning, she awoke early, exhausted and thirsty. She had a vague memory of climbing into bed and crying herself to sleep. As she made her way downstairs to the kitchen, she felt like a visitor in her own body. What was happening? Why was she so discontented? She put on a pot of coffee, washed her face, and drank a full glass of water. Surely she had used up all her tears for this week. She couldn't remember ever crying so much or feeling so drained. <clears throat> she tied her hair into a bun, poured a cup of coffee, and sat at the kitchen table. Colleen looked into the dark liquid and felt like the answer she craved was hiding in such blackness. She watched the steam rise from the cup. It reminded her of incense, and she hoped it was working the same, carrying her prayers and pleas to heaven. Colleen cradled the cup in her hands, feeling the warmth and sturdiness. This gave her the courage to ask the question again. Deep breath in, slow exhale out. Softly and sincerely, she whispered, Let me hear your voice, Lord. What must I do to spend eternity in heaven with you? She took her time with more slow, deep, deliberate breathing exercises, eyes closed and stillness all around the quiet kitchen, peace and stillness, oneness with God, no distractions. Colleen opened her eyes and realized that this time the hum of the refrigerator had disappeared. The long lists that usually distracted her mind were gone. She smiled and thanked the Lord. She could feel him looking at her and loving her. She sensed this was a turning point in her life. You are speaking to my heart, she mused. The realization seemed so clear now. How did she not see or hear or feel it before? She slowly drank her coffee, embracing this new perspective, this new openness. Refilling her cup, Colleen grabbed a pen and paper. Across the top, she wrote, What must I do to spend eternity in heaven with you? She capitalized the Y in you to indicate God. Then she listed several ways to know him. Father, Son, Holy Spirit, God, Savior, Jesus, Messiah, Friend, guide, wisdom. She surveyed her list, praying each name with a gentle breath of love. Next, she added the date in the upper right-hand corner, 10, 10, 21. This will be an important date to remember. It even looks important and sturdy with the double tens. She guessed this list will evolve and grow throughout the rest of her life. You are the one, Lord, she praised. Colleen doodled a row of hearts across the page, then began a new list. She titled it, Truth Commandments. Number one, make time for morning prayer and time with the Lord. Number two, bring life with your smile into every room you enter. Number three, build up others and focus on their gifts, not their flaws. Number four, 
Speak about others just as you want others to speak about you. Number five, acknowledge the times you're not your best and work to repair the damage. Number six, pick up the phone and call someone who is struggling and lonely. Number seven, sit with loved ones and learn from them, especially the elderly. Number eight, let go of things no longer of use to you and give them to someone in need. Number nine, do work that brings you joy and makes the world a better place. And number 10, give more love than you receive. That's awesome. These truth commandments that really speak. Isn't it neat? Yeah. I know. I know. So Great I, story. I hope so. Thank you. I hope everyone gets a little bit out of that. So if you want to refer to them, I will post it on our website later today. But let's get back to our four-step process. And I'm excited. There are so many people watching and praying with us right now. That's really going to help make this time really, really more meaningful. And I know the Lord's going to be speaking to us. So let's dig in. <clears throat> Lectio Divina is divine reading. <clears throat> it is an encounter with God. Excuse me. <clears throat> the key elements are to allow the Lord to lead this prayer time. Be open to hearing God speak through his living word. Surrender to his message for you at this moment. And accept the challenge to wrestle with and grow into the word that God gives you. Allow his word to nourish and transform you. Reading the sacred word is listening to the voice of God. Listen deeply with your heart. Be present in each movement and take time to savor the process. Be attentive to your breathing. Let go of distractions and open yourself to this encounter with God. Let's all just take a deep breath, just like the lady in our story. Deep breath in and a slow exhale. Our first movement is Letzio, which means reading. We will read the scripture passage slowly. Listen for a word or a small phrase that beckons, unnerves, disturbs, or shimmers, and gently focus on that word in silence. Jesus, looking at him, loved him and said to him, You are lacking in one thing. Go, sell what you have, and give to the poor, and you will have treasure in heaven. Then come, follow me.
Our second movement is meditatio, which means reflecting. We will read the same scripture passage again. Focus on the word or phrase that shimmers and accept any images, feelings, and memories that stir in your heart. Jesus, looking at him, loved him and said to him, You are lacking in one thing. Go, sell what you have, and give to the poor, and you will have treasure in heaven. Then come, follow me.
Our third movement is oratio, which means responding. We will read the same scripture passage again. Listen for what connects with your life and record the prayer, awareness, or call to action that arises from your reflection. Jesus, looking at him, loved him and said to him, You are lacking in one thing. Go, sell what you have and give to the poor, and you will have treasure in heaven. Then come, follow me. Right. This is the time when we share the one word or phrase that was given to us. What did you get, Kate? Um, I was given the phrase, follow me. Right. And I was given treasure in heaven. So I invite everyone watching to type in the word or phrase that you were given. And we will take this fourth movement to just rest in his presence and then come back for discussion. Thank you. Our fourth movement is... Contemplatio, which means resting. 
we will read the same scripture passage once more. Slow your thoughts and rest in the presence of the Holy Spirit. We offer gratitude for his presence in this time of prayer, stillness, and communion with him and with one another. Jesus, looking at him, loved him and said to him, You are lacking in one thing. Go, sell what you have and give to the poor, and you will have treasure in heaven. Then come, follow me. As we conclude this prayer time, gently connect with your breathing and become aware of your surroundings once again. Of course, that reminded me of the story because that was, you know, what she was struggling with and trying to find her time to be alone and quiet with the Lord and hear Him. So, um, I hope that you felt Him and heard Him in this time. I sure did. So, Kate, why don't you go first and... Tell us about Follow Me. Okay. Um, well, I, those words just spoke to me greatly because I just, for myself personally, I find myself uh, listening to far too many other things in my life, and such as the devil telling me stuff, and also just myself, kind of talking to myself and having thoughts I shouldn't have. And then I saw that those two words follow me and it just means to me to concentrate and know that Jesus is there with you every minute in the hard minutes that you're dealing and helping other people or in the minutes when you're struggling alone at your home and you're just sitting there and you don't know 
the next step. He's right there with you. And I just, I need to make a little banner that says that, follow me so I can look at it while I'm praying. <laughs> but anyway, that to me, then that was kind of what he was saying to the disciples, you know, forget everything and follow mm -hmm. me. So. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. That's beautiful. It's a good, uh, something we all need to work out, right? Right. But, um, but he's there, no doubt. So right. he'll show us the way. So what was given to me was the phrase treasure in heaven. And so I was trying to, I just started thinking, well, what is treasure on earth versus treasure in heaven? And so Jesus said, you know, give away, sell everything, and you'll have treasure in heaven. So um, I think it kind of goes with what you're saying, to follow him instead of following other things, you know. Yeah. But then I thought it just, you know, he just put it on my heart that he made us all good. He made us all to be good people. All things he made are good. And so we are going to be treasure in heaven. So I was like, what a great goal for me to start thinking of myself as yeah. becoming treasure in heaven with him. Because he made me good. So he's going to help me be good again <laughs> when I'm not so good. And um, Anyway, and so... I've been, you know, for the past, since Sunday, Father's, you know, assignment for us, Father Jerry's, was, you know, to ask him, what are you lacking? And um, so the first day he gave me that I was lacking trust. And then, then he gave me this morning that I was lacking direction. And so I think that all goes with it. So my direction is to trust him and to work to be treasure in heaven. So my first question was, what do I need to do? And then I realized, stop. Stop trying to do things. <laughs> and so what he gave me is, what do I need to let go of? And what am I lacking to be treasure in heaven? So, Amen. Yeah. That's beautiful. Yeah. So let's all work on that this week and keep spreading the love. Yeah. And uh, remember that he made you and you are good. Amen. So we miss you, Fred. We hope you come back next week and keep Love everybody you. in prayer. And we, we bless. We hope everyone has a blessed week. And we'll see you next time. Yes. Bye. Bye.